ready with an opening statement? Well, we did some good things tonight. Um, I thought Tyler Jackson threw the ball very, very well. Um, no walks tonight. Pounded the strike zone after, you know, a few too many free passes over the weekend. Uh, we got back to doing um, what we've done all year, which is just pound the strike zone. thought Tyler did a nice job. It was great to see Owen Griffith get some work in there. Threw the ball very, very well. And we kind of broke it open in the fourth. It all started with a two-strike double from Chris Williams. And then Andrew Cox with a two-strike double the other way. Uh, Jordan Green with the infield end did a good job of staying on a pitch and driving it to right field. And then, uh, you know, did a great job of base running, going first to third on uh, the attempted pick to third, which you don't see a whole lot. Uh, so, uh, you know, overall, you know, I thought we did a really good job of hitting with runners in scoring position, you know, outside of the one inning where we had uh, Seth's leadoff triple to second and, and, and had uh, some strikeouts, even though I thought Chris Williams took, a, took good swings there. Uh, Robert Jolly infield in, single the other way. Uh, Wesson Jackson, two strike, sack fly. Uh, so I thought overall we did a really good job offensively and we pounded the strike zone. Um, I thought Chris Williams made a great play early on to try to double steal, strike him out, threw him out at third. You know, that kept them at bay right there after the solo homer. You know, they're fighting right there for a big inning, and he doesn't make that play. Um, you know, they may score multiple runs right there. Um, so, you know, just overall, um, I thought we, we obviously threw strikes. We swung the bats very well and uh, found a way to get it done, which is always good here in the middle of the week. After the, the two-game losing streak, how big was it to get a win with this game sandwiched in between Florida State and Wake Forest to kind of get that winning feeling back? Well, you know, the winning feeling to me is trying to play as pressure-free and as anxiety-free of baseball as we can. That was our big message today before batting practice was, um, you know, the, the anxiety and the pressure of winning and just focusing on the outcome so much, you know, is, is really – not the best way to play baseball. It's not the best way to do anything in life, quite honestly. You know, we're very process driven here, and all we want our guys to do <clears throat> is compete every single pitch of every single ball game to the best of their ability. And we start getting, we start talking about expectations, and you start talking about outcomes all the time, and you know, what you're not doing well. You know, next thing you know, you got 18 to 22 year old kids that are putting way too much pressure on themselves to try to perform. Uh, in a game that you can't really control what happens a whole lot. Uh, so our big message today was, you know, let's go out and just compete for nine innings and have fun and just relax and take the fear of failure out of it. Take the outcome out of it. Just play. And uh, I thought we did a good job of that tonight. You know, we didn't panic. Did we make some mistakes? The only mistakes we made were physical, and they made us pay. But you know what? We didn't panic. And we kept pounding the strike zone. We forced them to swing the bats. And at the end of the day, we scored more than they did and uh, filled up strike zone. So uh, I'm proud of our guys. And, uh, you know, it is good always to win. We all know what we're here to do. Uh, but, you know, winning is a byproduct of playing the game the right way. And I thought we did a pretty good job of that tonight, outside of a few things that we'll address and practice tomorrow and learn from and get better. How and difficult. Was, was just relaxing and just kind of having fun that fourth inning. You know, again, if you just stick to an approach, you know, if you just stick to a good offensive approach and not try to do too much and just understand what the pitcher's trying to do to you, you know, we just kept constantly saying out dug dugout, hey, get the baseball up and drive the ball to the opposite field gap. Just really just to get our guys on the mindset of staying on the baseball and not trying to do too much. And that's exactly what Chris Williams did. You know, he stayed on the breaking ball and even though he pulled it, you know, if he overswings right there, strike three. And we don't, we don't put up six runs. He started it because they had a good approach. Then Cox, and then next thing you know, you get that momentum going, you know, with our offense and, and good things happen. So, uh, you know, again, it's just about being, uh, you're just having really good quality at bats and, and putting pressure on them when they went to the bullpen. And I uh, thought we did a good job of that in that inning. And, you know, obviously that built our confidence, you know, for the rest of the game. thought we you know, swung the bats very, very well. How, how difficult was it to play a grueling three games down at Tallahassee and then have the quick turnaround to play Georgia just from a, a routine standpoint? Um, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, it's, it's – I think we really try to preach to our guys that, you know, you just got to be ready to play and that, you know, it, you just got to be – you can't worry about the schedule. You know, I mean, we got back late uh, Monday night, <coughs> I guess Tuesday morning. And uh, guys had class, and, and we knew that we had a, a quick turnaround. But, you know, to be honest with you, I kind of like it that way. 
you know, a quick turnaround. Um, I think you want to get back on the field. Um, that's at least the way I like it. I think it's good for your guys to get them back on the field and force them to compete uh, so that you can see what kind of club you have. You know, is this a team that's going to let that, that tough loss on Monday night linger on? Uh, or are we going to let that go and learn from it and compete tonight, which is all that matters? And I thought we did a good job of, of letting it go and competing tonight. Not to focus on the negative, but that seventh inning, three unearned runs, it begin to feel a little bit like deja vu from the Florida State game Monday? No, I don't believe in deja vu, and I don't believe in negativity when it comes to physical errors. You know, I mean, Jordan Green leads all of the ACC second basemen in fielding percentage. So, you know, going into the night, he's the top defender in the ACC. Uh, so, you know, he had three balls that were hit pretty good. The only play, and this is just in general, it's not that this play, but the double play ball, the only thing that I told our guys is you got to catch the baseball before you throw the baseball. And I thought he was just a little bit too quick, just being aggressive. That's an aggressive mistake. He's trying to get it to Logan so we can turn the double play instead of just catching the baseball and then throwing the baseball. You know, defense is a series of targets. And, uh, you know, he's just trying to be a little bit too quick, but you are too, you, you're typically quick when you're aggressive. So I don't want to take his aggressiveness away from him. Uh, the other two plays are just tough balls. You know, he's got tough hops. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's not an easy thing to do to catch a ball with top spin. Uh, you know, it's hit pretty good. So I don't, don't, the last thing, the only thing I want Jordan Green to, to understand is he's a plus defender. And, um, you know, even though he's made three errors tonight, you know, at the end of the day, how he responds is all that matters to me. You know, I just, I just want to see how he responds. And, and uh, you know, if, if he's got the right type of mental toughness and, and um, he can turn the page, which is what we want him to do, then he'll be fine. Speaking of responding, you brought Hensi in for the final out. Uh, he had a rough inning at, at Florida State the other night. Was, was that to see how he would respond, or was it more the way he played the last time uh, in Athens? He had a good outing against Georgia. It didn't really have anything to do with what he did at Athens. It was more just about the matchup at that point. You know, they had, they brought the left-hander off the bench, uh, Tally, who had some pop. And when we looked at uh, the at-bats versus left-handers, he only had seven at-bats versus left-handers on the season. So I felt like uh, either they're going to bring in another pinch hitter that doesn't have a lot of at-bats, or we're going to make him Tally face Hennessy with only seven at-bats versus a left-handed pitcher on the season. So we knew at that point that they probably would dump him, but if they didn't, um, he's got limited looks against a left-hander. And we knew that Hennessy fills up the strike zone, and when you got the time run at the plate, that's what you want. You want a guy that's going to pound the strike zone, and, and he did an excellent job of uh, just filling up the zone and, and getting it done for us right there. Monty Seth Beers raised his batting average about 30 points over the last week. Is this – the best stretch you've seen him play this year? And is he one of those guys that you were talking about who's just kind of letting baseball happen and not trying to force things right now? Yes, I think I think the biggest difference between Seth and the last, you know, seven, eight games, whatever it is, where he's really been on fire and swinging the bat well, is, uh, you know, he's smiling. You know, he's enjoying it. It's, he's not putting all that pressure on his shoulders. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a kid that, you know, he has extremely high expectations for himself as a hitter. He knows how good a hitter he is, and, and uh, you know, it's frustrating. And, uh, but he's handling it very, very well, and I think he just started to relax a little bit and uh, get back to his strength, uh, which is being disciplined at the plate and uh, you're looking for good pitches to hit and not trying to hit his way out of it. You know, I think the worst thing a hitter can do when he's struggling is to try to hit his way and swing his way out of it because – what happens is you start swinging at pitches out of the strike zone. And he just got back to just being relaxed and uh, getting good pitches to hit. And, uh, and he's starting to square some balls up. And, you know, he has absolutely hammered some balls here lately. I mean, the ball he hit Monday night against Florida State, one of the hardest balls I've seen hit. Um, so he's definitely swinging the bat much, much better. And I think it's just, you know, at the end of the day, you just got to have fun. You know, you got to believe in yourself and have fun. And, we all know Seth has uh, a tremendous amount of confidence in his ability, but you know he's uh, you know he just letting go of the frustration and playing. When you have a guy like that, you see him struggling a little bit, and you know that he has to get to that mindset. Mm -hmm. Do you say more to a guy like that? Do you leave him alone? Like, what's your what's your approach in that situation? It's a really good question. Um, you know what I what I try to do um, is take as much of the pressure off of him as possible. 
and just try to show anytime a player, a hitter, uh, goes through a tough stretch, what I want to show him is film of when he's crushing the baseball. Because I want him to see for himself what it looks like when he's swinging the bat really, really well. And oftentimes what you find is they'll look at themselves with some at-bats where they're struggling, and they'll look at some at-bats where they're swinging it good, and they don't see that big of a difference. And all of a sudden, they start to get the confidence that they need that I don't need to overhaul and change and listen to all the different voices that I've got going on right now. Because when a hitter's struggling, I guarantee you somebody wants to give him advice. You know, and, and, and oftentimes you have to just go back to the basics of, okay, what is my strength? What do I know works for me? You know, this swing made me the ACC player of the year. So it's not, it, 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 it's not that far off. And, um, but we're all, we, we're all guilty of that. You know, anytime we go through what we identify as tough times, what's well, the first question you're going to ask? What's wrong? And how do I fix it? And, um, but I'm just proud of him that he stuck to uh, his beliefs and what he believes makes him successful. And, you know, all it really took was just trying to just keep him in the strike zone. And if he stays in the strike zone, he's as dangerous a hitter as there is in this country. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Mark.